Due to the COVID-19 virus, we are all told to shelter in place. I'd like to share with you a short devotional about sheltering in Jesus and praying for those who need the help of the Lord. About 140 years ago, Vernon Charlesworth wrote the words to a hymn in many of our hymn books called A Shelter in the Time of Storm. About five years later, Ira D. Sankey wrote the music and this song was sung at a number of places for many, many years. The first verse says, the Lord's our rock in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill betide, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. As we're sheltering in place, many changes are in our lives. These changes have happened suddenly, unexpectedly, and not always in a good way. As we're sheltering in place, be mindful of others who are less fortunate, those who are going through tragedies in their lives, those that are seeking for answers that cannot find them. It's rather unusual for me to be sharing this devotion to essentially an empty church. I'm here at our church, but our members are not present. So I wanted to especially send out some words of comfort to them as well as to others who might view this video. The church is designed by the Lord to be a family. And along with that comes fellowship. We are to gather together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet during this time, we've been unable to do that in the same building. Family is very important. And part of the family of God means that we do have care and compassion for each other. Our fellowship is in Christ Jesus. So even though we're not physically in the same place, we still can fellowship with the Lord. So as we come together in this new way as the church here at Springdale, I'd like for us to be prayerful during the next few minutes. As we think, first of all, of those whose lives have been lost because of this virus. There are many tens of thousands of people around the world who are no longer alive because of this COVID virus, along with other reasons for death, some of them natural, some of them accidental. But I think of the bereaved, the family that's left behind. In some places, a family is not even able to have a funeral because of the quarantine. Or if there is a funeral, it might be with just a few family members present. This virus has reached over 180 countries on this little ball of clay that we call home. There are those who are sick with the virus right now, some who are recovering and others who sadly will not make it. For those who are in the hospital, their family in most cases can't even go to visit that loved one who's sick. My thoughts also go toward the elderly, for those who are shut in, those that seem to be most susceptible to this virus. There are some who are in nursing homes and assisted living homes that don't understand what's going on and long to see their loved ones. There's one dear friend of ours who is in an assisted living home and her son and daughter often visit standing outside of the window and they're on their phones to talk to their mama. And I think that's a beautiful expression of their love and that's basically all they can do at this time. As we think about those for whom we should pray, I also think of those who are sick, who are basically told not to come to the hospital. Elective surgeries have been canceled or at least postponed. Right now, we really can't go see a dentist or to see the eye doctor. Students are not in school. I am a public school high school teacher and I miss my students. I would love to finish the course of chemistry that I was teaching them, but right now it's not possible. As we also think in prayer for others, let's realize that many families are going through stressful times. 
Some families are just trying to maintain their sanity. In many cases, their finances are in ruins. People have lost their jobs. No money to buy the things that they need or store shelves that are empty and no products there. But yet during this time of sheltering in place, perhaps this serves to bring the family closer together. My sons have been out of work on and off recently working at a factory and we've spent a lot of time together working on doing some DIY projects at home and home repairs. And they've done such a wonderful job and are surely a blessing to my heart and working with eagerness as we try to complete some of these projects. And I pray that families that are stuck together do love one another. I do live in a house, but I understand many people live in a small apartment and there's really no space you can get away from others from time to time. So some people are going stir crazy. One of my church members told me the other day, and she does live in a, a, a house, but she's not getting out of the house. And she said she just would like to get out and out in the yard and do something, but she wants to get in the vehicle and drive around and, and just go to do something because these times are very, very unusual. My heart goes out to people who have a lack of food and the necessities of life. And while in this country, we've had to fret over not having enough toilet paper or being able to buy the milk and the bread and the eggs that we need. Yet in many other nations, those people don't have any food at all. Many of those people around the world are part of the body of Christ, are part of the family of God. We should remember them. We need to be praying for our government leaders. They need godly wisdom to deal with this crisis and whatever comes next. Jesus talked in Matthew 24 about what it would be like shortly before he comes again. And he said, there's going to be a time of great difficulty, pestilence and famine and peril. And he said, this is just the beginning of sorrows. I believe we are close to the Lord's return. I hope that you're prepared for his coming. As we're praying to also thank the Lord for what we might call the essential employees. I am thankful that the grocery stores are still open and the pharmacies are open. Many of these businesses are available. Restaurants that can't serve inside have curb, curbside service or takeout service. So be in prayer for those who really are facing the public not knowing who might be carrying some disease. Also be in prayer for Easter Sunday some of you may be listening on Easter Day. And for here in the southeastern part of the United States, we've got some severe weather on the way. The possibility of hail, very high winds, and tornadoes. And it looks like this might be on a sustained basis. Just pray and ask God for his mercy. I want to encourage you that not just on Easter Sunday, but every day of the year, God is still on the throne. And he cares for you. He is in control. In fact, how do you know that Jesus really cares for you? How do you know that there is that love of God? I like what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 5, 8, where he said, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Some people might question, Lord, where are you in these difficult times? Where are you in the midst of this virus? Where are you? When we need food, when we need shelter, when we need protection, where are you, Lord? And God is still there. Sometimes you have to seek him. And the Bible promises that if you'll seek the Lord, he will be found of you. You will find him. You can trust in the rock of ages. As a hymn writer wrote, he is a shelter in the time of storm. I believe Jesus will hold you in his everlasting arms if you just let him. We've all seen children who tend to squirm a lot and mom or daddy might be wanting to hold them in their lap and wrap their arms around them and the little one wants just to get away and to, to run away and go explore. And sometimes people do that when it comes to their relationship with God. But rather than run away from him in times like these, run to him. He will hold you up in his everlasting arms. 
Listen to these two verses from Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, and then we'll have a time of prayer. The scripture says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Heavenly Fathers, we come to you in prayer today. First of all, I thank you that you are God, that you are on the throne. I thank you that you've created us. You've placed us on this wonderful planet, just the right distance from the sun to give us the right temperature. You give us fresh breeze. You give us rain and then dry seasons. You give us a, a change in the weather pattern. And you're, you're constantly working to help us. Uh, foods are able to be uh, harvested from the crops that you allow us to get. And Lord, you, you've blessed us in so many ways and we often forget your blessings. Lord, I pray for our Springdale Church family. Be with those folks who are sheltering in, who can't get out much. Lord, who just wonder when will the end be in sight? When will be, we be free of this quarantine? When will we be able to get back to some semblance of normalcy? Well, Lord, I believe things are going to be different in the future. I still pray that your church will be able soon to gather together and to worship you. Lord, I especially want to pray for those who have lost loved ones during this time, for those who are sick or under quarantine, for those who are shut away in assisted living or, or care centers. And Lord, thank you for those who give the wonderful care that they do. Lord, for those that perhaps need some sort of surgery and and are unable to get that right now because of this crisis in our country. Lord, I pray for the young people, for the students, uh, Lord, that they might do what they can to continue education and the materials that the teachers provide for them. I pray for the parents, Lord, who are trying to deal with, with all these struggles at home and, and this vastly changed situation. I pray for those who uh, had a job but perhaps are no longer working or maybe only working intermittently, that, Lord, you will provide. And thank you for the, the decision of our president and others to uh, provide some financial relief to those who are in this country and for our small businesses. Lord, we thank you for those who are still working to provide for us. We ask your Lord, that you would provide all that we need. I know you promise in your word that we will, and you don't promise that it will be all that we want, but all that we need. As the Apostle Paul said, having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Lord, I also ask you for that divine leadership for our president and for others in this nation who have these tough decisions to make. That, Lord, you'll be with uh, them and, and help them to lead and guide our country aright, to help our economy get back opening again and, and functioning and, and working well uh, as it recently has. That, Lord, uh, during a time of, of a weather crisis, whatever the weather is, where people are listening to this, that, Lord, you will protect them. And if the storms of life come, help them to shelter in you as they're sheltering in place because you do care for us. Thank you for your love. Thank you that we can abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that you, Lord God, are my refuge and my fortress. You're my God. And I do trust in you. Bless us, I pray in Jesus' name, and help us to be ever looking upward, knowing that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. In Jesus' name, amen.